Hey everybody, so today we're going to answer the question, can you fundraise before you have 501c3 tax exempt status? Let's get into it. Tiffany with Boss on the Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. If you need help with your nonprofit, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I drop a video every single week. So let's get into this question. Can you fundraise before you have 501c3 tax exempt status? And I'm ve being very careful about my words. So you see how I'm saying 501c3 tax exempt status because the terminology you use, your understanding about Words like nonprofit or being tax exempt matters when I'm answering this question. So what I'm going to do is break down the terminology first, just to make sure we all understand and we're talking about the same thing. And then I'll answer the question, can you? But how about I just tell you now? The answer is yes. But you need to understand why and how that is, because I know some people are nervous and they're like, I'm just going to wait because I don't want to make any mistakes. But the reality is you do not have to wait, but there are some things that may go into that decision that you may still decide to wait. So I'm going to break all that down in this video. So let's first talk about terminology. Let's talk about the word nonprofit and what it means. So when you're a nonprofit, a lot of people think it's the same thing as being a 501c3 organization, and it's not. So in order to be a nonprofit, you have to establish your business entity at the state. And just keep in mind that there are many different types of nonprofits. Not all nonprofits do charitable work. And so you may be confused by that because you're like, wait a minute, they serve the community. They don't make profit. Well, there are some nonprofit like member associations or home associations or social clubs that they're not really set up to help the community. That's not their primary goal. Their primary goal is to foster a community within whatever they have going on. And it, they're not necessarily set up to do charitable work. If you want to do charitable work, the recommendation is to be a 501c3 organization. But just keep in mind that being a nonprofit and a 501c3 nonprofit are actually two different things. And you can be a nonprofit even if you don't have 501c3 tax exempt status. Now, let's break down tax exempt status. What does that mean? First of all, there are two levels to this, okay? Always remember that it's not just with the federal government or with the IRS that you have to adhere to laws or rules. You have to first check with your state, right? But when we talk about tax exempt, we're talking about federal tax exempt status. That means whatever income that you make from your nonprofit, whatever mission related income you make, is exempt from income tax. So when you record your taxes at the end of the year, they're not going to give you a tax bill based on the money you make. You can make that money freely, right? You don't have to worry about paying it back to the IRS. So that's what we mean when we say, or experts say, tax exempt status. Now, the other thing you need to keep in mind is that there's not just one tax exempt status. There are other 501Cs other than 501C3. There's a 501c4 for more political organizations. There's 501c7. There are about 29 different tax exempt statuses, and they all have different rules and different things they have to adhere to. But if you are watching this because you want to do charitable work and you want to serve your community, that's traditionally what we think about when we think about nonprofits, and you want to be a 501c3 tax exempt organization. That's the status that you most most likely will um, need to apply for and will be eligible for. Okay. But I just really recommend that you do your work, do your research. I can give you general information just so you're clear. You're not confused when you start searching, but you really should understand for your individual situation, what's best for you. I'm only going to give you general information. And then from there, you can be better equipped to answer your specific questions. So I wanted to go through those definitions because we have to be starting from the same place. We have to all have the same understanding of the words that we're using. Hey, y'all. So I wanted to mention one more thing that I didn't get to say when I was recording, that if you decide to fundraise before you even incorporate as an organization, be very careful because the money that you raise 
may be counted as personal income and that has tax implications for you. So if you're going to fundraise, make sure you are an organization first, but also consider all the different laws that you may have to adhere to and be responsible for. So let's get into the question of the day. Can you fundraise even if you don't yet have your 5013C exempt status? So the answer is yes, simply because you don't have to be a 501c3 tax exempt organization, you know what I mean, if you're a nonprofit. So just that alone gives you the, the A-OK to fundraise with some caveats that I'm going to talk about in this video. But you can fundraise, you can ask for money and solicit donations, even though you're not yet tax exempt, if you're looking to be tax exempt. The one thing you need to keep in mind, though, is that rules for fundraising happen at the state level. So the attorney general or the secretary of state in different states have established processes, which they call charitable solicitation. Like you have to apply to do charitable solicitation where you have to um, ask the state to be able to fundraise and solicit the residents of their state. So that means in your home state or where your nonprofit is operating, if you want to ask people for donations in that state, you have to go to the secretary of state or the attorney general's office, whatever it is in that state, and apply to be able to fundraise in your state. Now, the definition of fundraising, the threshold of which you have to apply, you know, the amount of money you have to raise to, to meet that threshold or requirement for application um, is different. It's different by state. So it's important for you to do that research and figure that out by yourself. I'm going to drop a link in the description box below so you can see across the entire United States the requirements for soliciting in each individual state because every law or every state is different. Some don't even require that you apply and some don't require until you raise a certain amount and some just off the bat say before you even ask you have to apply. So it's important for you to arm yourself with the right information and to know. The other thing I'm going to say is that if you have a donate button on your website, many states consider that active solicitation because at any time a resident of their state can see it and then donate and they may require that you set up that you know process in their state. Even if you have no intention of soliciting anybody in that state, just you having a donate button alone can trigger a requirement for applying for charitable solicitation. So it's really important that you do your research and figure that out, right? So to answer the question about 501c3 tax exempt status, yes, you can fundraise, you can fundraise all day, but you need to make sure that you're, you know, you're adhering to the law in the states that you're fundraising in. And that has nothing to do with the IRS. It has everything to do with individual state law. The other thing is having tax exempt status gives you a sort kind of like a stamp of approval that a lot of people or a lot of donors feel more comfortable having. So you actually have a letter from the IRS, right? So when people at the end of the year, you know, unless you're audited or something, you really don't have to show proof, you know, of the organization that you gave to. But a lot of people need that sense of security to know I'm actually giving to a legit organization. And most people don't even know it about charitable solicitation, but they do know about 501c3s. So when they see that you have that status, they feel more comfortable and are going to be more apt to give to you and more willing to give, a, you know, a certain amount. They probably give more because they're more confident that you have that status. But again, you do not have to have that status to fundraise. You can start fundraising. So if you need money to start your organization and you want to start asking people for money now, you can do that now. Just remember, if you're doing it as an organization, you need to check the state law to make sure you're on the up and up and you can do that. So that brings up the last point that I want to say is that if you have a pending tax exempt status, so if you've submitted an application to the IRS and you're waiting for a decision, any donations that a donor gives to you in that time period can be counted or they can claim that on their taxes once you get the approval from the IRS. So you can kind of go retroactively back to the date where you submitted your application to the IRS and anything that came in after that, if a donor wants to write off that donation, um, they can once you're approved. So it's not after you get the approval, it, you can also use that pending period for donors to claim that donation. I hope that makes sense.
So I have a video that talks about what 501c3 organizations are, and that goes into more detail. But what I will say is the benefits of it is that people who give to you can claim those donations on their taxes, right? And so that's not the only reason why people will give to you, but that's still a motivating factor and that's still something to keep in mind. So again, as you're making the decision as to whether or not you want to start fundraising before you have your tax exempt status, that's another thing to keep in mind that some people are motivated by that status when they give and they may not give if you don't have it, but by no means do I think that you can't do it, right? It's just an individual decision that you're going to have to make for your organization. So there you have it. I hope you have a little bit more information and clarity about whether or not you should start fundraising. So that question I say, don't wait. You can go ahead and get started now doing active solicitations, especially if you're going to um, seek 501c3 tax exempt status. But just keep in mind all the things that I talked about and also that it's not a guarantee that you're going to get your status. So if people are counting on you to get that approval and it doesn't happen, you also need to consider what that means on the other end if they can't claim your donations. So these all these things just to keep in mind, but by no means do you have to wait to, in order to ask people for money to donate to your organization. So if you need help starting your nonprofit, don't forget to visit me at www.bossinabudget.com. There are a bunch of free resources there and I will see you in the next video.